This is one of the farmlands destroyed by illegal mining in the western region. Many interventions have been implemented by the government, but the activity continues to persist in these areas. It is now taking a toll on Ghana's cocoa sector. Between 2019 and 2020, the data from the Ghana Cocoa Board indicates that out of the 22,984 total cocoa farm acres selected in this region, 19,251 acres have been ravaged by the Galamse menace. The chairpersons of the Board of Cocoa Board and Minerals Commission called for critical interventions to curb the situation. Ghana has 16 regions. If you go to major regions where cocoa are produced, like Western North, Western Region, Ashanti, Eastern, many of the farms have been devastated by the activities of Galamse. Are we going to just look at it? Because people's income are being wiped off. So there's the need to take a critical look at it, at the laws. The laws governing the Minerals Commission and how they operate. Our own laws, how we communicate. These are some of the areas that we'll be looking at to fashion a common ground for the upliftment of our dear Ghana. The problems that Galamse has been causing in um, the mining areas as well as to cocoa production. And we need to really um, determine strategies to address this. We know that for the 13 regions in Ghana, with the exception of about three regions, um, cocoa production is impacted by illegal mining. I think it's only in about OT region, Greater Accra region, and the Volta region that we don't have this occurring. We are also aware that many of our, the cocoa farmers are selling off their farmland for mining activities. And definitely mining is taking place underground, and cocoa production is taking place above ground. So if we are doing a lot of mining in our cocoa growing areas, Definitely there is a problem and we need to look seriously at it. The head of public affairs of Cocoa Board, Fifi Boafo, outlined the impact of illegal mining on cocoa production. In terms of production, it has effects on production. And secondly, it also has issue with degradation and the, the, to the extent that Ghana will be seen as a country where its uh, arable lands have been degraded. If we look at the current EU legislation being considered for passage, it talks about countries that have its forest or arable land that have been depleted. So this is also going to have an effect on the cocoa we'll be able to sell. But in terms of production, yes, it has a huge effect on production and there's every need for us to stem this because it has continued over a period of time and there's every reason for us to stop it because this is not sustainable, apart from the fact that, yes, one-off payment is given to these farmers. It affects what, as a country, we are able to generate from cocoa production, and then also it destroys the land which we have for the cultivation of cocoa. After the three-long-hour deliberation at the Cocoa Galamse talk, in Accra on Friday, Cocoa Board and the Minerals Commission agreed to collaborate to find a solution to the menace. There's the need to share information amongst us. And even outside our, our two organizations, there's the need to extend it to other major stakeholders like Water Resources Commission, Forestry Commission, and the judiciary. Because then they need to enforce the laws on mining and the cocoa industry as well. And so law enforcement and the judiciary comes into play. There's also the need to share maps of cocoa farms with the, the Ghana Minerals Commission so that before they give licenses to people to go and mine, they are in possession of farms duly planted with cocoa 
and not to destroy them. Sometimes the money that is offered to some of these farmers, they think is huge, but in actual fact, if they actually quantify what they can get from the cocoa production over the years, they'll realize that it's not that much. But because they are seeing um, some quantum of an amount immediately, they will take it and give away their farm. So we were looking at the um, opportunity where we can get something like a schedule of calculating um, the compensation that should be given for these farms. Over the lifespan, cocoa can, um, you can generate income for it for a period of about 40 years. So if you are taking somebody's cocoa farm and we are going to calculate the life expectancy of the farm to that farmer, and then you have to pay him about $1 million or $2 million before you can take his farm. I think that will also um, make them aware that in the long term, um, doing your cocoa farming is also of immense benefit. The Minerals Commission and the Ghana Cocoa Board have agreed to come up with a roadmap to address this troubling situation. I am Kojo Ajman reporting for City News.